Korea for its nuclear weapons program. Donald Trump will now seek for a virtual interview with a probation officer from his home in Florida today as part of the sentencing process for his felony conviction in the New York hush money case. The very first former U.S. president to be criminally convicted will appear from Mar-a-Lago and will reportedly be seated alongside his lawyer, Todd Blanche. A New York City probation officer will use the interview in a pre-sentencing report for Justice Juan Martin, who is currently deciding what punishment Trump must face. Mr. Trump was convicted last month of 34 counts of falsifying business records and is expected to be sentenced on 11th July. Well, pre-sentencing reports include information about a convict's personal life, criminal history, financial means, health condition, and overall living arrangement. They are used by the judge to inform what punishment should be given. The interview is often an opportunity for a convict to argue for leniency in the sentence. The appointment of Britain's next ambassador to the United States has formally been put on hold because of pre-election uh, white Paul rules. It's not being denied by Downing Street that Rishi Sunak has nominated Sa Tim Barrow, his national security advisor, for the role. But this prompted anger among some in Labour who accused the Prime Minister of trying to rush through the appointment before the election. Labour shadow ministers are understood to have voiced their concerns about Sa Tim's appointment during pre election conversations with officials at the Foreign Office. Let's turn out to India, where Narendra Modi has been sworn in as India's Prime Minister for a third time in a grand ceremony at the Presidential Palace in Delhi. The leader of the Bratia Janata Party took his oath, saying he would do right to all manner of people without affection or ill will. Mr. Modi's BJP-led National Democratic Alliance won the general election with 293 seats, a much lower margin than predicted by exit polls. The election saw a resurgence of India's opposition, which won 234 seats. Thousands of guests attended his inauguration at Delhi's presidential palace. Among them are heads of neighboring Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Maldives, but not Pakistan or China. And police say at least 10 people have died and 33 injured after suspected militants fired on a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in the Indian Federal Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. They added that the driver lost control, causing the bus to plunge into a gorge in Risi district of Jammu. While rescue operations have, conducted, have been conducted, a search operation by the Indian Army and police is underway to track down the attackers. Officials say Prime Minister Narendra Modi had taken stock of the situation and asked for the best medical care to be provided to the injured. Well, the Super Eagles is now battling for a place in the forthcoming World, uh, World Cup. Uh, the Super Eagles is expected to play Benin Republic later today. We have updates on that match in this report. Triggered by the unlucky outing against South Africa last Friday, Nigeria's Super Eagles touched down in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, venue of their next World Cup qualifier against the Squirrels of Benin Republic. On arrival, a number of Nigerian fans were anxiously waiting to welcome their football stars. Not carried away by the ecstatic ambience on arrival, the players reported to training soon after. It will be the only session for the boys here in Abidjan before the crucial match on Monday evening. Midfielder Fisayo Deli Bashiru, who was injured in the previous game, is back to fitness and will expand Coach Finidi's options for selection. This is World Cup qualifiers. Um, the mentality um, must be different. So. Uh, we will approach the game uh, with every seriousness and uh, see how we can win. They want to win as well, so tomorrow is the D-Day. Um, 
yeah, we'll just come out and play and uh, do our best to make sure we win it. Benin Republic is coached by former Super Eagles handler Gennot Raw, but the players are not bothered about the German coach's knowledge of the Nigerian team. Gennot Raw, yeah, he coached us for five years, yeah, but during those years, players are coming, players are going. Uh, facing him is actually a motivation because we know he's a good coach and uh, we know he's going to plan he wants to win. And we approaching that game is like we, we have to show him that he actually missed something uh, in the team. So I think that's what we have to do now. The Super Eagles sit in an uncomfortable position in Group C of the qualifiers and the win is desperately needed to set Nigeria's path on the road to the 2026 FIFA World Cup. And that's the world now. For more updates on the stories we're monitoring around the world, you can visit our website. It's tvsnews.tv. You can also follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram, and X at tvsnewsng. On YouTube, we're live at tvsnews.nightarea. Thanks for watching, everyone. I am Nifemi Ogunto.